Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to put text onto a stick and make it look like it actually belongs on the stick. So the first thing you're going to want to do is isolate the clip that you want to bring into After Effects. So I made a in point and I made a out point with my blade tool and I right clicked and you can click replace with After Effects composition. So what that will do is it will open up After Effects and make a timeline that matches the settings in your Premiere project. One thing you want to make sure of though is if you're working with a red R3D file, you want to make sure you convert it to a .mov file because otherwise the tracking software won't recognize the R3D files. So with your clip selected, you want to go to Animation and Track in Mocha AE. And what that will do is it'll open up a program called Mocha. And what Mocha is, it's a planar tracking software. Uh, you can click register later. And what the way, and here you can click OK. And the way planar tracking software works is that it tracks the entire area of a plane, of a flat surface, rather than point tracking, which will track things in a two-dimensional space, this will track things in sort of a two-and-a-half dimension space. So once Mocha opens, it'll give you these red bars. Those are your in and out points of your entire clip. So that's where the bulk of your shot is. Um, a good starting point is where you can see her hands uh, not covering any of the stick. For instance, if we were to start over at the beginning, her hands are way in, inside the bucket, and that wouldn't really work. So what we'll probably want to do is start at the very end. So once you're on the last frame, what you want to do next is go up to this X button, and you want to create an X spline layer. And what I'm doing now is I'm specifying to the computer what area I want to track. And you can go ahead and put a little square up here. I avoided putting a square, any of the square down on the bottom part of the popsicle stick because of the fact that earlier in the shot her hand comes in and covers it, which will make for a problem later on. So I'm sticking to the part that is always visible. The next thing I want to do is I want to click on this little S with a square around it, and I, that shows the planar surface. So right now, the planar surface is just right here, but in actuality, I want the planar surface on the last frame to be the entire frame. So what this button over here does is it will push the planar surface to cover the entire frame. Click that, and these blue lines go all the way to the edges. So from here, I'm all set up to start my tracking, and I want to track backwards since I'm starting at the last frame of the clip. So as the tracking happens, I'm watching these four dots on my rectangle, and I'm watching to make sure that they stay in the same spot throughout the entire track, because if one of them moves or all of them moves, then my track starts becoming a little wonky. Another thing to remember is that all tracking shots aren't made equal. So some shots might be perfectly easy to do, and you can just put your four dots around and make a mask. This one I would say is sort of on the medium side because her hand comes in and we have to adjust our track to make it fit as well as our tracking area is relatively small without a lot of texture on it so that also makes it a little bit difficult to do. But overall I would say this is a medium difficulty object to track. Other things that are really difficult to track are when you have a lot of motion blur. So if you're shooting something on set and you know you're going to have to motion track it, you might want to think about upping that shutter speed so that when you go into do your camera tracking, your tracks don't get affected by the blurriness of a slow shutter. So once the tracking is done, you can go to export tracking data on the lower right or there's also a export tracking data in the file menu and that will bring up the same thing. Uh, you want the top one, After Effects corner pin, corner pin only, uh, and you can just copy that to your clipboard. 
And then you are done in Mocha and you can go back into After Effects. You don't need to save anything in Mocha. You can just exit. So now they have it copied. I can come over to After Effects and I can bring my cursor back to the first frame and I can go layer new solid and I can make this solid any color I want so we'll leave it as red and make sure your cursor is at the very first frame and go to edit paste and what that will do is it will paste all the keyframes you made back in Mocha so if you press the letter U you can see all the keyframes that were just made but most importantly when we get to our end frame are all our corners are on the edges which is the way we want them if it doesn't then you did something wrong with the push all corners of the surface to the edges button in mocha so you need to go back make sure your keyframe is at the very last frame push that planar surface button and then re-export that tracking data you don't need to track the object again you just need to re-export the data so now I can go into pre-compose and I want to leave all the attributes okay and I want to edit copy this footage down here then we'll open up this one edit paste the footage and what this is going to do it's going to act as my guide layer so I don't want it to render in the final comp so I'll turn it on as a guide layer we can turn off this uh, solid and then we need some text so make some text will you go out with me question mark and I can bring it up on top of the guide layer and we'll make it two lines and I want it really big and I want it so big that it covers the entire frame but doesn't go outside of the frame so that is just about right now what I want to do is I want to go to my corner pin drag my corner pin on top of the text and I want to take these corner pins and drag them right onto the stick then we can go in a little bit closer and really fine-tune the placement that we want for these guys okay so we have our text matched up with the footage where it's supposed to be and since we already tracked it we can go back into our main composition and see that as we move the text goes with the stick but it doesn't look entirely real it feels like it needs to be blended in a little bit also sometimes there's a little toggle switches slash modes button down here and what that will do is it will switch between your effects settings and your blend modes so what I'll do is I'll turn on overlay what that's gonna do it's it's gonna make it look a little bit more real and what we can also do is lower opacity to make it blend a little bit better as well maybe 70% so once we have that, you can preview it, and we run into another issue. The text is over her thumb. So what we need to do now is we need to duplicate our footage layer, bring it on top, and we need to create a mask. So the next thing you're going to want to do is hit the pen tool and the pen tool is right here. You can also select it by pressing the letter G and this is just going to be plain old rotoscoping. And we can create a mask path keyframe and we can also feather the footage a little bit and then we'll just go in and set the keyframe set the keyframes to just barely cut out our text and so the trick with rotoscoping is that you don't actually need to rotoscope every single frame 
what you can do is kind of do these broad, broad rotoscopes and, uh, and then go in between maybe halfway and then kind of make, make them fit. So once we, get to a spot it look where it looks like all the ones in between are pretty well covered then we can we saved ourselves a good amount of time so that looks good now we just need to preview it and see how it looks so that's all there is to it the text sticks and the thumb goes on top of the text. So in the end, if your track isn't working for you and it's just not sticking, then you would need to go back into Mocha and redo your track. So if you could make your blue dots a little bit more precise, then that might help. There's also a whole flurry of other tutorials online that show you how to use Mocha in more detail. Hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, practice makes perfect, so go out and try it with your own footage, try it with your friend's footage, try it with various different cameras and different techniques, and keep getting better.